Thank you for speaking to us today, Comrade Salem Muslim. The current situation in the region is a very dangerous one, I'm sure you would agree. But what particular dangers does it pose for the Rojava revolution? What we are seeing in the Middle East is the Third World War. Uh, all the hegemonic powers and uh, uh, and the others and even uh, local powers are, I mean, uh, they are in alert in the media and they are uh, fighting each other also from time to time. So it's a very dangerous situation, not only for us, for all the Middle East. And uh, nobody guess or what's going to, uh, to happen because... Uh, there are many powers and many forces and uh, huge um, powers there in the area. So uh, we, are, we are also waiting and we are uh, in the middle of this conflict as uh, as Syria, as northeast of Syria. Uh, so we have to be very careful and uh, even for uh, political relations and for the military sides and so on. Actually, uh, the reality is uh, that uh, all these powers, they are looking for their interest. Some of them them are looking for the, the ways of the energies, I mean, gas, petroleum, whatever it is, and even for the, uh, the material um, wealth in the, in the area, and so whatever they are. But the problem for us is very different. We are looking for our being, I mean, our existence as the Kurdish people, as the, the people are, I mean, living in this area. We are trying to have at least, I mean, a quiet uh, land, quiet place without fighting. But of course, we cannot uh, say to the others, I mean, to stop uh, fighting or to... Uh, to, to stop this struggle and non -burning. So uh, we are waiting. What, all we can do, we have to uh, prepare ourselves, I mean, for any worse conditions and so on. And the Syrian conflict is um, more than about 13 years, is continuing till now without any solution. And um, uh, there is no solution because uh, the local forces like Turkey and the Iranians and the others, they have their own plans and the international hegemonic uh, powers, they have their different plans, uh, which is um, affecting each other. I mean, because of that, there is no solution. And mainly, uh, Turkey was uh, in, the, in the middle of this conflict. And from from the beginning, uh, the president of Turkey said, I am the co-chair of uh, this uh, big um, uh, Middle East project. So he's, uh, he was uh, one of those uh, effective forces in this uh, plan because uh, all the others and even NATO depended on him to uh, try to implement the moderate Muslim or moderate, moderate Islam through the Muslim Brotherhoods to all the area. Uh, so I think this plan has been failed, but it's not finished yet. They are still trying to do something, I mean, uh, uh, trying to control this chaos, chaotic uh, uh, situation now. But the Turkey's aim was to get rid of the Kurdish people, I mean, to finish them from the beginning. And this is a big obstacle um, in the way of the Syrian political solution and also for the Kurdish um, riots and so on. Kurdish people, they could stand, I mean, resist and stand, and they are, um, till now they have they kept their existence in the northeast of Syria. And also, more than that, they, uh, they have their own project for all the solution in Syria, which is not acceptable by... Turkey. So because of that, we are seeing the attacks of Turkey from time to time. And even recently, maybe uh, also you're following this. They are just uh, 
getting the opportunity of that. I mean, of this conflict to attack the Kurdish areas, Kurdish people, and uh, they said many times they are going to destroy all the infrastructures and making their life difficult. And they are doing so. I mean, till now they have done it. And we expect from now on also they will uh, get uh, an opportunity for this conflict to to do whatever they like to do for the Kurdish people. You know, I mean, uh, this uh, uh, they call the, uh, the Islamic States, ISIS. Uh, we believe it, it is a kind of company. Everybody, they have their shares in it. But mostly it's directed by Turkey till now. And they used it from the beginning until now. They are still using this ISIS uh, because daily basis we are seeing this ISIS uh, sleeping cells. They have come kind of relations and uh, from Turkey they are getting money and getting weapons and trying to... Um, to do what they can, I mean, to destroy the, these areas. Well, those attacks, I mean, from uh, is kind of uh, start from the behind, I mean, uh, from the back, you know, stabbing from the back by Turkey and the others. Of course, I mean, uh, doesn't make uh, uh, democratic Syria forces so effective, but they are trying, I mean. But when uh, that point is, when we have uh, organized ourselves, I mean, our people and uh, including this uh, legitimate defense for ourselves in 2014, we found this international coalition. They said, hey, we can do it together. I mean, and we are kind of um, beneficial for both sides. And we agreed to do it. And still we are valid. I mean, this agreement fight against Daesh. But what I mean, I mean, we were already, we have organized ourselves and we were defending ourselves. And even uh, it was the beginning of defeating Daesh and then they came to us. So we will keep uh, organizing ourselves and we are now stronger than before. And uh, we will resist and uh, try, uh, of course, I mean, to make the peace between all the components of Northeast of Syria including the Arabs, Syriacs, and the others, uh, in order to protect our existence. But the recent drone attack on Deir Ezzel, which uh, killed six, I think, six members of the Syrian Democratic Forces, uh, was launched by a militia group uh, that is backed by Iran. Does this mean that the Rojava revolution is somehow being drawn into the current escalation of military conflict uh, around Gaza. In May 2023, they uh, agreed, I mean, as in Asitana, I mean, the, the, those four countries, one of their decision was to, uh, to dismantle this democratic Syrian, uh, I mean, northeast of Syria, democratic, um, self-administration in northeast of Syria in order to let the Americans go out from here. It was a decision uh, or resolution, I mean, by, by them in in, in May uh, two, 2023. So they are doing that. And since then, the attacks never stopped. Turkey has done it, and there were attacks through the resort by those um, tribes, uh, units, and so on and so on. All they were, um, I mean, of course, I mean, our forces, they have resisted. So it, uh, what I mean, I mean, these attacks, they were before mm. Gaza. Uh, so it's not related to Gaza situation. Uh, and of course, I mean, maybe you have followed from the, you know, the attack, the place which is training, uh, Mm. Camp in the in this uh, field, oil field, Al Omar, and six of our people. I mean, democratic Syrian forces. Uh, they have been killed. I mean, martyred. And of course, they have promised that they will take the revenge of them. And because our forces, mainly they are, um, I mean, they they are not attackers. They don't attack anybody, but they they are able to defend themselves. 
uh, legitimate defense for the areas. Until now, in the other side of uh, Euphrates, there were some uh, militias, Iranian militias and other sides, and uh, our people never thought to attack them or to dismantle them or to do against them. Till the attacks, of course, I mean, our people were retaliate to it. Has the Democratic Autonomous Administration in North and East Syria made a clear position on the current war between Israel and the Palestinians? Yeah, for the Palestinians, I mean, I will believe this, of course. I mean, the, the Palestinian has right. They have their right and they shouldn't be, uh, I mean, uh, genocide uh, like what's going on in Gaza. Um, but of course, I mean, also we look at the Jewish people, they are part of the Middle East. I mean, they have rights also. But this mentality by al-Hamas, which is uh, similar to a uh, Daesh mentality to eradicate the Jewish people, is not correct. I mean, uh, we consider that uh, Hamas is not representing the Palestinian people. And also for the Jewish people, I mean, because they are trying to eradicate the Palestinians. I mean, Netanyahu mentality is also not the solution. They cannot bring the solution. The only way we consider is, uh, is similar to our project. I mean, uh, the, a democratic nation state, which they can live together, or democratic nation says for both sides, they can live together which in peace and with a dialogue not by, by fighting, but uh, this mentality by Hamas and Netanyahu is brings the, uh, I mean, destroying all the, the people in the Middle East, I mean, the Palestinians and also the Jewish people. So it's not the right way. In the 1980s, Palestinian and Kurdish liberation fighters fought side by side against Israel's invasion of Lebanon. That was a moment when there was clear uh, solidarity between these two important national liberation struggles. Will these two struggles uh, once again be seen as working in solidarity with each other right throughout the region? Well, it's a bit, of course, I mean, we respect, I mean, the, the Palestinians and their uh, uh, rights, I mean, democratic rights and so on. In 1980s, you are right. I mean, there were some Kurdish people that are joining. All of them, they are in the left uh, of Palestinians. I mean, all the organization that was struggling again, the, um, uh, Israel for democratic rights, for Palestinian rights, they were leftist. But now we are talking about Hamas. Because of that, I said, is Hamas is not representing the, the Palestinians. You see, and uh, of course, I mean, still we are trying uh, to have relations with those uh, leftist uh, groups and, um, uh, I mean, um, organizations of the Palestinians. Uh, but of course, they are weak. It's a shame, I mean, it's a big loss for the Palestinian um, to have uh, Hamas representing them, which is, uh, we, we cannot deal with them at all. I mean, because... As I said, it's the same mentality with the Daesh. They are, all they are doing not the, the Palestinian rights. What mm -hmm. they are trying to do to establish the Islam, Islamic State or Islamic Caliphate, whatever it is. And this is their aim. So it's a completely different situation, I mean, between 1980s and now. And we are still, I mean, we support the, the Palestinian democratic rights for them. Uh, but not in the way of Hamas. While Israel has been waging its war in Gaza, uh, the Erdogan regime has been continuing its bombing raids of North and East Syria, uh, killing people and also destroying infrastructure. How serious is this problem? The aim of Turkey is to evacuate these places, to, to, to have these lands without uh, the Kurdish people and even the components which they have slaughtered them in at the beginning of the 20th century, like the Syriacs, uh, Armenians, and the others, to, to get rid of them, to finish them. This is the aim of them. And of course, what they have done, 
is the war crime and even crimes against the humanity and which uh, they are i mean Erdogan is saying for the israelis how they are attacking gaza but he is uh, doing the same for the kurdish people i mean in our areas but nobody is blaming them <laughs> so mm. it's a, it's a really is contradiction i mean how you blame uh, something for the the israelis which is right i mean it shouldn't be and you are doing the same for the Kurdish people and mm. everybody is silent. Of course, I mean, they have destroyed, I mean, all the infrastructures and, uh, and the oil facilities and the gas facilities and the electrical uh, stations. And now the most of the areas are without electricity now, and even without gas. And we have difficulties, I mean, in trying to import the, the gas from Iraq or from some other places and even the the diesel is it's a big problem for us so in the this uh, what uh, we have now is the winters uh, winter uh, i mean season so we cannot get anything for uh, fuel i mean for heating heating the the houses heating the places so it's it's very difficult situation really and as as you know if there is no electricity maybe the bakery cannot work the other mm. cannot work so we have very difficult situation. And this is what the Turkey wants to. Mm. Turkey is trying to, to, to make their life very difficult for pe people to leave this area. In January, the autonomous administration in North and East Syria marked its 10th year of operation. A new uh, social contract was adopted and a new name was adopted. Can you explain uh, the significance of this development? Well, there are two points. The first of all, I mean, uh, we consider the conflict happened in Syria is because of the the oldest regime, which is what was uh, uh, dictatorship and despotic regime and um, refusing any identity for the components of Syria and even for the Kurdish people, for Syriacs, for all the components. Only consider that Syrian is Arabic and the Basis regime should uh, do everything and they should control. So this was their mentality. And uh, the alternative for that was uh, the democratic nation which all the people can live together and so on. So what the, what you know in the our democratic, uh, I mean, solution for Syria and for this one. This is for first point. I mean, we cannot implement the model which was destroyed Syria. It was a cause for destroying Syria. So we have to try another model to be convenient for everybody to live in peace and brotherness. This is one point. And the second point, when we uh, started, I mean, to struggle against regime, asking for our demands for democracy and peace for as all the Syrian people, of course, we were in, in the 19th of uh, uh, July, yeah, 19th of July 2012, we were able to, to liberate our areas from the regime. And then there was a, a kind of a, a vacation, I mean, because you need the administration, you need to do something for those people. So we have established the administration, democratic self-administration. And this democratic self-administration wouldn't, I mean, we didn't like to be like before. So it was that. I mean, we were enforced to do something to to fill this vacuum happen for for the to administrate, administer our uh, relations and to look so this was the case i mean two points one is we don't we wanted to return to the old regimes practice and the second one because there was a vacuum we have to fill it now while the war in gaza has been going on uh, the turkish state has uh, continued to attack north and east syria and uh, what has been the response of the Assad regime to these attacks? Well, I think they were, I mean, struggling to protect themselves, I mean, from the attacks, and by support of 
Russians and Iranians are now, they, they are not able to decide for themselves. They are just, uh, I mean, doing what is asked for them. And there were Iranians, they kept them, helped them, and then Russians helped them. And they make them to, st to stand, I mean, in their places. And now try in uh, Turkey making, uh, to make some relations with them. So, and because of that, I think they don't, they are not able to take their decisions by themselves. So they don't have their willings in their hand. And of course, I mean, our administration from many times, maybe since 2015 and so on, uh, we were trying to knock their doors to have a dialogue for solution for all of Syria, not for um, only for ours. And, uh, they said no. I mean, the last one, maybe it was one year before. Uh, they are still, I mean, insisting to, I mean, surrender to them, and then they will decide to what to do, which is not acceptable by our people. I mean, because you know, we have, uh, I mean, uh, tens of uh, thousands of martyrs uh, defending these rights. So it's not easy for us to and to be surrendered to the Syrian regime, which is very weak. What we see, and some times we contact some people coming from their areas, is a very difficult situation. In um, There is no um, stability, and they are, of course, economically, they are very, very um, bad situation, and they cannot give uh, any, uh, they don't have any budget or anything, and... Uh, bribes and slotting and, and people and so so it's, a, it's a, a very difficult situation of course i mean we have now about one million people which they have escaped from the other areas living in in our areas um, but uh, they cannot live i mean that place they are in the hell really and of course uh, maybe only the military and the others which they are getting their salaries from uh, those uh, drug uh, trafficking and so it's something different uh, but as a nation as a state they don't have anything power and even the the military is uh, is very weak they cannot do anything so it's a very bad situation i mean it could could not be compared with what what we have here about one month ago uh, we were able to issue uh, a social contract which is very very democratic and uh, the, the relations between the components and so for democratic cases for the people for freedoms and even for the women rights but according according to this experience and so we modified it to very detailed things i mean for the uh, for the management, for the governance, and for the human rights, and uh, I mean, it's uh, it's two sides. I mean, what our society needs is is in it in included, and of course, in accordance with those uh, all the international, uh, I mean, agreements and uh, resolutions by the United Nations and so it's is a kind of uh, complete. Uh, I mean, uh, can say, I mean, it's a, a complete of um, maybe uh, constitution for our areas, but not ordinary constitution. So it's something different. Mm. And of course, I mean, mainly for the women, women rights and so on. It's very, very, very good things. Well, thank you, Saleh Muslim, for this very interesting interview. And we express our ongoing solidarity for the Rajava revolution. And we hope that uh, your liberation struggle sets an example for other liberation struggles in the region.